What's up everybody, I'm the Mangoose, you are awesome, and uh, there's been a lot going on in the little world of MOBAs that I track, mainly with Fault and Overprime. We're going to get into that today, and we will start trying to do these weekly, but uh, let's dash right in with Fault. The monetization changes. If you saw the video I did recently about Fault's monetization, they've changed quite a few things, and I'm happy to see that. It means that they're actually listening to us and bending a little bit on what, they, uh, what they're what they going to do. I did say in that video that everything... Nothing was set in stone, everything is subject to change. So let's take a look at these changes. So first off, we have three different packs now instead of just two. And it starts off with the Fault Pack, which is still $20, but now it gives you access to seven heroes as opposed to five. Then you have the Founders Pack, which is now a $30 bundle, and you get access to 14 heroes and 1,000 coins. And then you have the Masters Pack, which is the big $60 bundle. And of course, for three weeks, you know the prices will be a little bit lower on all of these. But for the Masters Pack, you get 14 of the main heroes, 3,000 coins, a giftable Fault Pack, and the Season Pass will be rolled into that. So more value all around for more bang for your buck. Uh, my opinions haven't changed on this. I still think they should come down on some of the prices a little bit. But um, I, I am, like I said, I am glad to see that they are willing to make changes. And the Season Pass has not really changed at all. And again, I want to see that just completely go away. A lot of you guys have some pretty good ideas for the season pass. Big Fat Gamer was talking about how you should be able to grind in-game currency for it, which would uh, increase retention while helping people that maybe don't have the money to buy the season pass actually acquire it. I think that's a great idea. I think that's something that they should probably consider doing. Moving on, they have their own original hero that they announced that they're going to be working on called Ular. All we really know is that he uh, wields two axes, so kind of like Chimera. I don't know if he'll be able to throw them. I, isn't there a, a, a god named Ular in Smite that throws axes? Like, maybe it's going to be like the Smite god. I don't know. I just know that I like this direction. I like that they're using the money that they got from their Indiegogo to invest back into the game and create some new stuff separate from Paragon. I know a lot of people want just a direct recreation of Paragon, but that's not going to work, I don't think. I think they're going down the right path here. Um, there's definitely going to be people angry if Ular gets added into the game before their favorite hero. Um, I won't be. If Ular gets added in before Richter, I can understand what they're doing. They're trying to distance themselves with Paragon and be fault. They don't want to be a pair of zombie they want to be their own thing and this is a big step towards that goal another example of them spending their money wisely they have a new skin for chimera a lot of people were complaining that they would be monetizing the work of other people whenever they were selling the skins from paragon that were available with the free assets well with this skin there nobody can really complain about it they made this skin all on their own it's a pretty awesome looking skin if i do say so myself chimera not one of my favorite heroes but i'm sure a lot of people will be happy to see this skin in the game but they they also kind of showed us some of the concept art for some other skins that they have planned so good direction all around for fault i'm glad that they are listening to the community and they added more value for your money to those packs i think i would rather see the money the, the, the cost come down as opposed to more value added for the cost, but still it's a great change nonetheless. Moving on to Overprime, they're currently working on a monolith map. If you've ever played Mo Overprime, you see that there is a map selection button, and I guess you'll be able to decide whether you want to play on the legacy map or the monolith map, which is something that Paragon fans asked for quite a bit when Paragon was still alive. And it'll be nice to see that they do that. This will bring in fans from both phases of the game. I mean, really, Paragon was kind of two different games when you look at it. I don't know if the travel mode will still be there on the uh, on the monolith map. I, I hope not. That would be too. That would just be way too fast. That would be ridiculous. But still, nice to see. And they've also, they're, they announced that they're working on a new hero to be added to the game. Now they said Fighter is coming, and they have a picture of Murdoch, Steel, and Grux. So, Murdoch is already in the game, Steel and Grux are not. I think in the past that they've referred to Grux as Fighter, so maybe they're referring to Grux. Uh, that makes a lot more sense to me, since Boris pretty much has Steel's ultimate, and it would be weird to have 
two heroes with the same ultimate in the game. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll see Grux added in to Overprime sometime soon. Uh, don't quote me on that. that. That is just my speculation. That isn't confirmed by them in any way. So it very well could be Steel that they're adding in and not Grux. Or maybe it's just nobody that's actually in that picture. You never know. They're also going to be implementing Harvesters. And the message that was attached to this little update said something about experience. So I assume that the Harvesters that they'll implement will not give you card points but will or gold but will instead give you experience. I don't know how I feel about that. I, I'm definitely all for har Harvesters coming back. That was a cool mechanic that you don't see very often. And I don't know if it'll work like the old um, Monolith Harvesters or if it'll work like the Legacy har Harvesters. And I suppose that they would have to add in keys for this unless they just plan to have it a flat um, plant time for the Harvesters. If you guys never played Legacy, you could plant a Harvester without a key, but it took forever it was like 20 seconds or 30 se seconds something like that and you know that that's forever in a, in a game like uh like paragon and with a key it only took like five seconds so i hope that they introduce keys and that was um that was another fun thing to to make sure that somebody on your team at, at least two usually two people had keys so that you could plant your harvesters and that's all i got for this week folks i do have there were a lot of updates for project stamina for you, you gigantic fans However, I have a huge video that we recorded. I uh, recorded it with Kroof and uh, Fancy Pants. I really don't know what to do with that video. It's so huge and there was a lot of audio issues. But anyway, um, if you guys don't know, my, my job, I work sun up to sun down, uh, usually six days a week. So that leaves me, you know, as the days get longer, that leaves me less and less time to make videos. So I'm going to try and focus up more on these weekly update videos. Uh, I've been dropping a lot of videos lately, more than... I normally do it's because I knew that this was coming so so yeah if you enjoy these weekly up, update videos there's going to be this is going to be kind of the main focus for my channel for a little bit and um but anyway if you liked the video be sure to hit that like button subscribe if you want to see more but this is the mango signing off you guys have a good one mango